Hey everyone, this is Matt N3 VAN, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to build a 110 micro Henry loading coil. Now, the reason I want to build this uh, loading coil, uh, I have to build one for my friend. This one's actually mine, uh, but I also want to revise this one to make a larger hole so I can put the ring terminal through uh, with the uh, antenna wire. Uh, the reason you might want to do this is if you have a small yard and you have an end fed halfway that's a 40 to 10, which at my office I have a 40 to 10 end fed halfway in an inverted L configuration. And what it does, let me get a, a paper here is um, takes your matching unit, goes up to the inverted L. This one's in a little slight inverted L sloper configuration. And it converts your 40 to 10 or 20.5 meter wire with the 110 micro Henry coil. You had about two to 2.5 meters, so about like, you know, six, seven uh, feet of wire added on, and it gives you 80 meters. Now the 80 meter portion of the band is gonna be a little smaller um, resonance, but you can use a tuner to actually uh, touch that up and get other frequencies out of there. So this is what we're going to be doing today, and um, I already have this one for myself, but I want to build another one for a friend, and um, as well as make a revised version of this so I can put, like I said, that ring terminal connector in there. So what I'm going to do is I already have it over on the side here. I measured out a little longer, as you can see. Let me move this paper out. Just a little bit longer. And I measured out the distance um, of this. Now, to figure out what you need for a loading coil um, is you have to do the coil inductance calculator, which there's a real nice one online at 66pacific.com. I'll put that into the description. And let me grab my, where is it? There it is, my veneer caliper. And what you're supposed to do is you can do either inches or centimeters. So I'm going to measure this out. I believe this is a 25, yeah, a little over 25 millimeter um, uh, PVC pipe for outer diameter. And then what you need to do is you need to figure out the length of how much wire you're going to do, which you're not going to know offhand, um, but you can pretty much figure that out with the calculator. And then you need, let me see, where is there a piece of, um, piece of my 18 AWG wire? Huh. Thought I had an extra one laying around here. I guess I don't, but I'll go measure that. But from my calculations, I need 182 turns on this PVC pipe, and the diameter will be 27.27 millimeters, and that includes um, the wire. You gotta make sure when you measure it with the veneer caliper, um, the wire is on there. So wire it up a little bit, measure it, and it should come out to 27, well for mine at least, for a 25 millimeter uh, PVC pipe comes out to 27.27 millimeters. So in centimeters that is 2.727. Uh, the length is uh, a little bit over eight inches. So you take that calculation, convert it over to centimeters and I believe it's gonna be 20.8 centimeters. And when you do the turns of 182, it comes out to an inductance of 110 micro Henry's. And what I'll do is to find out if what micro Henry's you have on the coil, you use a digital LCR tester. Now I have to turn this upside down. My leads are not that long. So please bear with me. I'm gonna put the, uh, the leads right here. There's one here. Let's turn it on. And put it there. There we go. A little slight bit over 110 micro Henry's, but that's perfectly fine. Uh, let me actually put it onto the, uh, the post and see if that makes a difference. Uh, when I made this, and I did measure just recently, Showed almost exactly 110 microhenries. I guess not. <laughs> but as long as you're close to 110 microhenries, you are perfectly fine. So give me a few minutes. I'm going to go wind, um, wind this up uh, with some uh, 18 AWG copper, enameled copper wire. Drill some holes in there, and I'll be right back, and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, now that I had this wound up, it took a while. Uh, there is a little bit over 182 turns of 18 uh, gauge, um, 18 AWG wire. Let me actually measure that. It's one measurement I didn't have before. So about 1.10 meters. OK. 
Okay, and let me just double check if my calculations are right. Last I checked, it was 27. Eh, a little bit less, 27.22, 27.21 um, millimeters. And let me get this. Uh, might probably be over because I did a little bit more than um, the 182 turns. And it's easier to remove turns than it is to add turns with the wire. So let's see what we have here, everyone. 110.6. All right, I'm gonna loosen a turn, not cut it, and see if we get a little bit closer to uh, the 110 exactly. But that's pretty much exactly the same as the one I already built. As you can see on this one, oops, all right here, <laughs> I made a larger hole so I can run the uh, um, I-ring terminal through there. So when I put it on the, the wire, I'll go outside and sire that up uh, in this nice frigid weather up here in the Northeast Pennsylvania. And uh, just for you, I'll probably make a video, I'll probably go outside and solder it up in the next video, just a quick one, and test it out on my radio, show you how it works. Uh, but let's finish this up. So we are a little over 110 micro Henry. Let's turn this off, unclip, unclip. Let's, uh, I got a little bit of electrical tape here to keep the, uh, the wire all together. So one more turn. Keep it nice and tight. Let me put this tape back up. So it would come out to about here. We're going to make a hole there with the uh, 2.5 millimeter drill. Let's test it. Turn it on. Might have to snip it a little bit because a little bit of this extra actually might be it you can't really unwind a little more I'm gonna snip it maybe down here scrape it off a little bit hang on bear with me there we go then obviously I gotta solder on some terminal rings on here throw the hardware through and I could do that in the next video for you if you really want to see that All right. let me get some of this off To get continuity. I'm not going to do it all. I just want to show you. Obviously, I will when I solder it. Oops, come on. Yeah, I don't want to unravel it again because it will definitely be under 110 micro Henry. So this will be perfectly fine. For what I need and if, if you make one like I saw uh, Mike on uh, on YouTube make one it was a little bit short and that's fine I mean you can always add extra wire to the end of it uh, instead of the two two to two point five meters uh, like it says right here you can add a little bit longer um, so it's not that big of a deal and you can even make one uh, I just have this too uh, one for a um, to get to 40 so a 20 to 10 where it's very short, 10.1 meters of wire, you can add a 34 microhenry coil and a little bit, you know, like almost just a little under two meters of wire to, uh, to make it 40. But I want to make a QRP version of this. I got this uh, 25 millimeter uh, outer diameter PVC pipe, but um, I also have a 20 meter and I believe this is the length I'm going to need. I might make it another video and add it onto this one or a completely different one for a QRP radio. Hey. Speak of the little devil, it hit 110 micro Henry, and I got to put the, well, I got to tighten it up a little bit. There we go. That's going to be it. Eh, it's a little under now, <laughs> but um, I'm going to put a uh, shrink wrap tubing over here, heat it up off video, and should be good. I got to get the hardware on there. I'll show you how to do that, and uh, we should be good. And then I'll do another video later on um, showing you my readings of the SWR through my FT991 on the current antenna I have out there, and then obviously um, after the coil and see if I can get some 80 meter contacts. Uh, stay in touch, I'm gonna put some, get some hardware for this, and we'll button this up, get it ready to go outside, and uh, should be good to go. See you soon. All right, everybody, I'm back with the hardware. I did drill the uh, two small holes down here, the 2.5 millimeter ones, and I got two wing nuts, uh, four washers, two for each side, not really necessary. Um, you could just put the uh, 
uh, ring terminal on top of one another. And I got two M5 by I think 16 millimeter long bolts, uh, some lock washers, and some nuts. So what we want to do, oops, let's not drop it, <laughs> is feed the bolt. Let me see, I could probably feed it through now. Still too small. Let's see. There we go. Come on, get in there. Shouldn't be using this, should be using my pliers, but let's see if I can. There we go. It worked. Don't do that at home. <laughs> Throw in the lock washer. And then the nuts. Since it's not a nylox, I think on the other ones I use nylox, but then I really had to clamp down. Let's see, is this gonna be long enough to ratchet on here? There we go. Just lock it enough in place. There we go. All right. There's one. Let's get the other one in place. not go through it oh, this one doesn't want to behave <laughs> as usual it's always that case right yep I drill it to M5 there we go should use a needle nose pliers not a wire cutter but I'm not putting too much pressure on it. So then you hold it, put in the other lock washer, keep the wire out of the way, and get your M5 nut on there. Spin it on. Now if your wire does loosen, you just have to, you see how it's going this way, wire comes out the hole here, and goes around, you just have to tighten it up, cinch it, in that direction pull it down and you'll be fine I really wanna try to make a QRP edition maybe make a video on that so I could use it on winter field day in a few weeks today is January 7th I'll probably upload the video later today hopefully if I get some time alright so that's pretty much it you know you could put these um, M5 washers on and then that on top uh, but what I really want to do is feed this wire through the hole make sure it's nice and tight that is the key feeding it through the hole is easier said than done because you gotta feed it through that hole and then get to the other I know HF kits makes a nice Nice kit for this, but you still got to build it. Let me see if I can feed it through. Come on. I should grab my pliers. Oh, I got it. This is the hardest part. Making sure it is tight. Okay. Get extra wire. You don't want to pull too hard, especially when you're doing the QRP edition. From what I see, 24 millimeter wire wrapped around one of these. You can rip that, and I think I have when I was testing it. Make sure it's nice and tight. Probably could have made that drill hole a little closer. It's all right. When I So we're going to feed it back up. That's the other problem, getting it back into that little tiny drill hole I made. Oh, any day now. Come on. Please listen. Oh, oh, there we go. 
Trust me, I make it look easier than it actually is. <laughs> Let's just make sure it's not too... Yeah, see it got... Got boogered up a little bit in there. Gotta be very careful. Let's untangle that wire. We do not want to pull. And then break this wire. Let me look at this off camera a little bit. There we go. Okay. All right, time for soldering. Give me a few minutes, I'll get the solder on there and we'll button this up and we're good to go. All right, right now we're gonna solder these uh, ring terminals on. I just got a piece of a uh, sealed air envelope. Now, which way you wanna do this is put it this way so it can flip over. So let me switch it to this side. Put some rosin on here. There we are. That should be enough to let me put some tin on this tip. Harder to do with uh, only two hands. Let that dry. Well, cool down. There is a nice connection there. Have to let that cool before I spin it. Let's go over to the other end. Where is a terminal? Yeah, and I'm wearing a jacket. It's a bit chilly here. Should be enough flux on there, I hope. Sorry, gentlemen, it's a little tough to solder only one hand. But that should do it. Actually, that wire is sticking out a little more than I wanted to. Hang on. That should do it. Let me let it cool down a bit. Sorry about that. Oop. It's much better. All right, let me wait until it cools, fold it over, and then we're good. Ah, uh, you know what I forgot, guys? I have a piece of uh, heat shrink tubing that I pre-cut, but yeah, it's not gonna fit on there. So. I take one of these off and uh, at least drop it down a little bit. So where is my, there it is. Switch it to loosen. There we go. Hey, there's always something. I don't want to drop too far down, so there we go. Let's see if I can get this over it. Hey, we all make mistakes. It's a learning process. And if you're perfect, well, congratulations, you're perfect. <laughs> All right, let me actually tighten up these windings a little more. Snug them in before I put this on. 
And when you heat this up, be careful. The PVC can and will melt Oops! if you're not careful. That should, uh, that should do it there. Let's get this back up. Spin it down. Oops. Let's tighten this up. Not too much that we don't crack it. Bend this up. It's much cooler. And over. Let's put a uh, M5 washer on here. And what came in this little speedy air or sealed air is uh, screws I'm going to use to build a QRP. Um, real nice QRP and fed half wave antenna. Really neat idea I had. It was actually here on the side. Nice little baby toroid and a bent over for the ground um, ring terminal. And it's gonna be nice and small. Now I'm thinking possibly using a, uh, one of those things, a BNC, or I have these real nice small SMAs that'll fit beautifully right here and then run a three millimeter antenna line right there. And this thing is so small, it's gonna be perfect. I'm gonna probably make a video on that um, today or another day, but that is for future. What I'm gonna do is bend these down a little bit, uh, heat shrink these a little bit. Let me tighten this up and actually check with the uh, LC monitor, LCR uh, meter, sorry. get it in focus for everyone Let's see what do we have what do we have ah still under 110 if I tighten it up a little bit I might be able to get 110 or 1 109.8 or 109.9 uh, I'm gonna work on that a little bit and uh, heat shrink this up and uh, we'll be ready to put this out and uh, that's pretty much it let me heat shrink this up, retest it. I'll be right back and show you what we got. And then in another video, a real quick video, I will uh, put it up in the air. All right, everybody, heat shrinking is done. Now we just got to put it up onto the wire. I'll be doing that in another video. Uh, but if you found this video uh, useful and you can uh, turn your 40 to 10 meter and fed half wave into a 80 meter add-on, uh, by all means, uh, hit the like button. If you have any questions or comments, please put it down in the comment section. And if you like the content I'm creating, by all means, please uh, consider subscribing. Thanks. This is Matt and 3VAN, and I'll see you in the next video.